Hey guys, what's up? It's Clever Techie, and in this video, we're going to be using MySQL Workbench to model and create a MySQL database. Okay, so you can see the model opened up here. What we're going to be doing is creating a database and tables which will hold all the information from from the IMDb Internet Movie Database website. The movies table is going to be the main table which will have all the information about the movies. Then we'll have a directors table, stars and genres to hold all the information about those guys. And then we're going to have three joining tables which is going to be our many to many relationships because many movies can have many directors and directors can have many movies. Many movies can have many stars and stars can have many movies as well as movies can have many genres and genres can have many movies. So that's why we have the many many relationship between all the three tables and the main movies table. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about in the previous video we created a script called I mean we created a a, yeah, a regular expression script to parse out or scrape internet movie imdb.com website. And here's a complete script. You guys can go ahead and download the source code from the description of this video. And I've actually modified it a little bit. Um, I made it so that all the data is provided in a nicely formatted array. And then all the data is returned. And this whole thing is a big function. So here's an example of how, how you would use it. You could store everything in a data array. We call the function. You specify the year start as well as a year end. And then the page start and page end. Then we can print our, our data. Okay, just before you guys start using the script, uh, this is kind of a hacking thing that we're doing by creating the script that will parse out the imdb.com website and if you do it too much they might not like it and they might actually ban your IP if you overdo it. So when you're just testing out the script be careful with how many pages you specify here. Start very small so this is why I'm only specifying two pages to scrape uh, to show you guys how this works. Okay so let's go ahead and see what happens here when I run this script. Okay, so it's it's gonna load uh, the uh, as the script is loading, it's gonna parse out all the records, and then it's gonna display this big array. I'm gonna go to view page source, and you can see how the array is organized very nicely. It's got all the movie information along with the title, year, image, etc. So now we're ready to work with this array and. And we're ready to create the actual uh, MySQL database that looks like this. Okay, so MySQL Workbench is a free program. You guys can download it, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and open up the Workbench here and create a new connection by clicking on this plus icon. I'm gonna name my connection localhost. For the username, I'm gonna leave it as root and press on the store in vault button and enter my password. Then I'm going to test the connection and it should say successfully made the MySQL connection. At this point I'm going to click OK. I'm going to double click on this connection to connect to it. And then I'm going to go to File, New Model. This is where we're going to be modeling our database. I'm going to double click on a Add Diagram. And it's going to have this toolbar on the left side. And these are all the tools we can use to model our database. So we're going to click on this icon down here which says Place a New Table to place our first table. And then I'm going to double click on this table and a new box will pop up with, where we can name our table as well as specify all the column names. Okay, so I'm going to name this table movies and then under the first column name I'm going to enter ID. I'm going to expand this box a little bit so you guys can see this better. And this is going to be our unique identifier. So and it's going to be the primary key which is going to auto increment. So make sure the primary key checkbox is checked. Make sure that not null is checked. Make sure that the auto increment checkbox is checked as well. Okay, so at this point in order to figure out what the column names are, we already have we already know all the information that we're going to be needing. So I'm just going to refer back to this model here and uh 
in order to know what the, all the fields are. So we got a title, year, and image URL. And I'm going to go ahead and enter those right now. Title, year, image URL. Going to go back to the image and certificate runtime IMDb rating. So I'm just going to keep going back and entering all this description, Metascore, votes, and gross. Okay, so now that we entered all the column names, we're ready to specify what the data type will be. I already have that. So for the title, we're going to have a varchar. Year is going to be an int. Image URL is going to have a varchar, which is going to be 255 characters. So we're going to specify that over here in the data types. Okay, so the year is going to be int. And the image URL is going to be a little bit longer, I think, because, well, if we go to back to this data here, you can also refer to all the data in this array. And you can see that the image URL is, in fact, a little bit long. So we want to account for that. OK, so next field is going to be certificate. And it's going to be a very small text. So we want to leave it as 45 characters. Now the runtime, we actually want to have it as int because that's going to be an integer, uh, the amount of seconds, or rather the amount of minutes the movie runs. Uh, IMDb, IMDb rating, that's going to be a float because it's going to be a fractional number because that's the way they store it. Now the description is going to be text because it's a description of the movie. So it's going to be a, a paragraph or more of text. Metascore is just going to be int, votes is going to be int, and gross is going to be int as well. And I'm going to delete this extra column here. Okay, so the description is text, Metascore int, votes int, gross int. Okay, so now that we have all of our fields for the movies, let me see. I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this and expand the, if I click on the table now, I can go ahead and drag this little box here to expand it. And then it's going to show what the actual movie table looks like. Now, <clears throat> we actually want to make the title unique because we only want to have unique movie titles in our movies database. So I'm going to double click on the movies table again. I'm going to expand the window here. And for the title, I'm going to say, I'm going to check this checkbox, which is unique. And also, it's going to be not null. Now, the year and the image URL should also be not null because those are the values that the IMDb always has. All the rest, you can leave it as that, as, uh, as null values because sometimes all those fields are going to be null. OK, at this point, I think our movies table is done. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file under movies and maybe movies. Okay. All right. So now that our movies table is complete, I can, uh, we can also create a director, so which is only going to have the ID name about, we can create the stars, which is going to have exactly the same thing. And then the genres, which is also going to have just a name. Okay. Let's go ahead and create those three tables now. Okay. So go back to our diagram and click on the table to create a new table, double click, click on this table and name it directors. Under ID, we're going to have a primary key. Make sure it's auto incremented. Create another column name, name, name and about. Just to make sure uh, name is going to be a varchar and about is going to be a text. Okay, so about can be a text and I'm just going to leave I'm just going to leave name as uh, 45 characters because I don't think there's any name that's going to exceed that and I'm just going to say the name is going to be not null 
and unique as well. Check the unique box. Okay, so, so now we can also create another table called stars and it's pretty much going to be the same thing. It's going to be really similar to directors. Going to double click on it, name it stars, create the ID, primary key auto increment, not null, name varchar and about text not null for the name and unique the name. Okay, so that's done. And then the final table is going to be genres. Going to double click on that, name it genres. Create the primary key ID again. Make sure it's primary key, not null and auto increment. And f for the field name, for the column name, I'm just going to have one name and name it name. <laughs> And for the, for the text, I'm also gonna leave it as varchar45 and make it not null and unique. Okay, at this point, all of our tables are complete. Now we're ready to specify what the relationship is gonna be between these tables. Because like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, many movies can have many directors, many movies, many movies can have many stars and many movies can have many genres which means it's a many-to-many -many relationship and in order to create a many-to-many -many relationship in MySQL Workbench and this is what makes it really awesome uh, on the toolbar over here let me just expand this a little bit so it becomes visible okay so Okay, you should be able to see it now. So on a toolbar down here, you can see, oh, Jesus, okay. Okay, so you can see this uh, icon here, which says place a new N colon M identifying relationship. So what you do is click on this icon to create a many-to-many -many relationship. Then you click on the movies table, and then you click on the table, on the target table, for example, directors. At this point, it's going to create a new table named Movies Has Directors, and you have successfully created a many to many relationship between movies and directors, and it's really that easy. Okay, next up, I'm going to create, I'm, I'm going to do exactly the same thing click on this icon again, then click on the movies, and then stars. That's going to create a many to many relationship between movies and stars, and then do the same thing with genres. And now we have successfully created the many-to-many -many relationships between movies, directors, movie stars, and movies genres. Now, I'm not sure why it's naming it Movies Has Directors. I prefer to name it Movies Directors because directors can have many movies. So it's like directors has movies as well. And do the same thing with the movies stars and movies genres double click on it rename it to movies genres and at this point let me just check to make sure we have everything uh, if i go back here so at this point we have successfully modeled and created our uh, diagram now let's actually physically create it in the database so the last step here is to uh, make sure you save this diagram by going to File, Save Model, and name it whatever you want. And then you're going to click on this Database tab and then Forward Engineer, which is just a fancy way of saying we're going to create this database now on our localhost. And then you wanna, you're wanna, you going to have this window here. At the bottom, I'm going to click Next, click Next again, click Next again, Next, and then it's, it's going to say forward engineering progress and all these boxes should be checked. That means the database has been forward engineered and finished successfully. You can close this window now. And then you can uh, either use your uh, um, command prompt or open up the MySQL work, uh, MySQL uh, PHP MyAdmin. Getting confused with all those names. 
Okay, so PHP my admin. I'm gonna log into it. I'm just gonna make sure the database has in fact been created. Under the database, you should see movies. Oh, whoops. Okay, so I know what happened here. Let me let's fix it. It's gonna be really fast. So under under the model here. Um Oh, okay, so you can sh you should see the catalog tree here. Go ahead and double click on it. And it should say MyDB, rename it to the movies database. And also go ahead and create the movies database. Create database movies. You can do that in command prompt or you can also do that in the PHP my admin by going to databases and then create database, just enter the name and then cl click create. Okay, so now that the dab database has been created, we can forward engineer the script again, and it should work now. Forward engineer, click next, 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 and looks like it's successful. Go back to the PHP my admin, and all the fields are there. So let's test it out and click on the movies table. Structure, all the fields are there, and go back to the movies database and you can see all the tables have been created and you can play around with it and check to make sure all the columns and database uh, data types are correct and as you can see all of our relationship tables have been created as well and that's how you create and model the database using mysql workbench if you guys uh, found this video useful please go ahead and like share and subscribe and please Make sure to watch the next video where we're going to be inserting all the data that we're scraping from the from the IMDB database and we're going to be inserting all this data the inside the database that we just modeled. So we're going to create the script for that and make sure you don't miss that. Until next time, Clever Techie out.